In this video, I'm gonna show you how to build this barn wood table. All right, so this table is gonna be made using barn wood and a plywood core. There's basically two ways that I build tables. Um, one is just to use traditional joinery and solid wood, and the second is to use some plywood on the inside. The reason that I occasionally use plywood on the inside is plywood is a stronger material. They've taken it and stacked it and glued it and made a strong material. It's not the prettiest material, but it is strong. It's also very flat and predictable, and it expands and contracts at about one-tenth the rate of normal wood. And so I've got some two by sixes that we're gonna rabbit cut and put around the whole outside. So when you're looking at it from the outside, it looks like you've got solid boards. And I've also got some one by sixes that I'm gonna mill down into barn wood veneers that are gonna go on the inside, on the interior of this uh, table. We're gonna glue everything down and we're gonna leverage the strength of the plywood and, and the beauty of the barn wood and end up with, uh, with a real nice table. So first step is we're gonna take uh, our two by sixes, which are going to be the outsides of our table. We're going to run over to the joiner. We're going to plane down the top side until I'm satisfied with the flatness and the amount of character that's revealed. We'll flip it over and we'll plane down everything so that it's all a uniform thickness. And then we can run over to the table saw, cut rabbit cuts out, and um, start assembling this thing. Okay, so we've got all the boards at a uniform thickness. I've preserved uh, some of the saw marks and character on the top, which is awesome. And now I want to straighten at least one edge out. As I mentioned, these are going to sit on the outside of the plywood and, the, and you're going to be able to see the outside of the board. And we're going to be cutting a rabbit cut out of this. And so now basically what I want is a really straight line that's going to be on the inside of the table and have other boards butt up against it. So I cut the track style. I'm measuring back five inches from the edge of the board on both sides, setting the track in and cutting line straight. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Makes life a whole lot easier when you've got 90 degree angles. Okay, so the next step here is I'm gonna do this big rabbit cut for uh, the, the, what, like a, creating a void for the plywood to go into. So first step I'm gonna do is I wanna leave this quarter inch veneer on the top. So I've set my saw that I can, so I can rip right up the top of that. And then I'll uh, adjust the height and the depth, and then I'll cut that piece out and we'll, we'll, get, that, uh, we'll get that little chunk of wood out of there. All right, so that first cut is done along there. I wanna make this cut now. So I've reset the height of my saw and the distance of my saw fence to, to match the cut I'm trying to make. Pretty simple. Okay, so now we've gone and, and uh, cut that out and our plywood's gonna fit inside there real nice and we'll butt up uh, glue and nail on both sides and, and adhere to that plywood. Okay, so these rabbit cuts are done, plywood's cut, and now the idea is that we're gonna glue and nail these on top of here. So that board will wrap around the edge. This is what everybody's gonna see on the outside. It looks like a solid board, but we've got this um, solid plywood on the inside. So glue, brad nails. We might put a little bit of clamp on it to hold this into the um, plywood while it dries. Okay, I don't know if we're breaking any land record speeds yet, but we're moving right along. So I've got these all around the outsides now. I've got plenty of glue in there. You can even see that it's kind of poking up um, in some of the nail holes and everything. That's awesome. I'm gonna let that glue dry. And while I'm doing that, I'm gonna put these interior pieces in. So I've got a quarter inch um, veneer now that's going on the inside here. And so we start off with these, with these one by sixes. I take them from there and I run them through my resaw and I get them down to about three eighths. After that, I straight line them with the track saw and then I run them to the table saw to get the other side so I've got nice parallel boards. Then I plane down the bottom side uh, just a tiny bit and then I flip it over and skip plane it just enough so that we still have these saw marks showing but I've got a real uniform board. And from there, we can start cutting and fitting those in and uh, gluing them and, and brad nailing them. And then we'll let this uh, set up. Okay, we're gonna let the glue dry on that tabletop and we'll start working on the base. Because it's a barn wood table, we want this to kind of have some beef to it. So I've got some of my old mantle cutoffs here and we're gonna use those for the legs. I'm gonna size them down to about a seven by seven. Um, I'm gonna use this handy dandy Prezi cutter uh, hooked up to a Makita saw. I love this thing, it's fun to use. Um, it, the, the reasons I like it is because, it, obviously it's a chainsaw, but it runs off of the um, circular saw and you get to use the plate to set your angle. So you can set a 90, you can set a 45, you can set whatever angle you want. And because it's sitting against this plate, 
and if your beam is straight, you end up with a really nice flat uh, cut. It's not obviously as precise as like a circular saw or something like that because it's a chainsaw, but it gets me close enough and rough enough without having to flip my, my beam over on my chop saw. Or if the beam is thick enough, sometimes you have to cut, uh, double cut the front, the top and the bottom, and then you still gotta go in there with the saw. So this just chews right through like a hungry monster. And we'll, um, we'll cut through, we'll get these about down to size. I'm gonna run over to the planer, square two sides up, and then we'll kind of get it down to where we want and then work on our joinery for the skirt. Okay, so I've already marked out the line where I wanna cut through. Um, as with all the tools in this video, any of the products I'm using, there will be a, a link in the description down below. You actually can get this Prazzi uh, unit on Amazon. They have two sizes and they have uh, ones for worm saws as well. So my line is marked out. All I'm gonna do is put this saw up on there and grab the trigger and, and cut through. flipping it over and you got a nice straight cut. Okay, so I've got all these beams cut down. Um, they're square, they're nice, they're ready to go. Some of them have a little bit of character left on them. I, I took a lot of the character off because these are getting stained and painted anyways. So next step, I've also gone and taken some two by fours. Uh, I've planed and joined them. I've ripped them down to the size that I want them. I'm gonna put the miter joints on them. And now I need to go and cut some rabbit cuts out of here. So I'm just gonna place this on where it's gonna go. I'm gonna trace out with the pencil, two sides. This is, I'm only gonna trace out one and this is just gonna help me set up my saw. And then I'm gonna do all the other ones the same. And then on the top here, I also am going to set it up flat against the edge. I'll trace out there. And one more here. I'll show you here with the black. So I'm not gonna go exactly on my line, but I basically have, have made a line that's going to help me to cut out this area here for these to sit in and these miter joints are going to join up on them and that's going to create the main structure of our base okay so we got two basic cuts one's going to be going vertical and one's going to come along horizontal so what i've done is i've set my my slide saw stopper right where i've got this line here right on the very edge of this side of the carbide tooth so i'm going to hold it up against this and then I'm gonna run the saw through all the way on two sides. I'll do that to all of the um, beams, and then we'll come back and do the second cut, which will we'll, which will take that piece out. Okay, now we've got this. So those two are cut out, and now we just wanna complete the cut by notching this one out. So I've set my fence back, and I've made it so that I can uh, push the block or the beam up against it, and then forward and through the fence, and I've set the, the height of my blade to, to come and um, meet up right there in that corner, and then knock that piece out. There you go. Now that's just notched out, perfect. And then our two by fours with these 45s can come and sit and meet up right there. And we'll have a nice, a nice uh, start to our base. Okay, now everything's pretty much ready to go. Um, I'm gonna go with, around this entire thing and glue and screw it all together. I'm not, I'm gonna be screwing in from the outside. I'm not too worried about those screws because I'll fill that with some filler afterwards because this whole thing is getting a stain and then getting whitewashed and then getting um, distressed. So basically I'm just going to start pulling these off, glue inside here, glue in here, and then uh, start mounting them together, pre-drilling and screwing them all together and making sure everything's nice and tight and fitting good. Okay, so the base is all done. I squirt it up and we're going to let it sit there and dry for a while. Um, and now we're going to come back and work on this sit top. So. I, uh, I've already kind of come, while I was letting the glue dry, I came and, and put a bunch of the filler in any of the deeper holes to give it kind of a chance to, to get in and dry. And then um, I'm gonna sand it all off right now with 150 and around the edges and everything. 
and then we'll flood coat the entire thing and then let that one dry. Okay, that's good enough for a quick sand. So Woodwise Wood Patch Filler. This stuff is actually for floors. Um, it's, uh, it comes pre-mixed, it's black. I flood the entire thing and then uh, it covers all my holes, covers all the cracks, covers all the nail holes, makes a nice smooth surface. I've already gone, like I mentioned, and pre-filled a bunch of these areas. And so hopefully those will flatten out. If they do still take some more and, and dry down into a divot, I will top them up and flatten them off. And it just really helps you get a really nice uniform uh, uh, finish on top. All, all the uh, all the cracks and, and divots are filled with the same color type deal and it's all smooth. So I just spread it on here, sloppy, and uh, go to work. I'll show you here. I just start working in like this and you just you're just kind of paying attention, looking, making sure that it's getting down into every crack. Sometimes I'll go with the grain and sometimes against the grain to make sure it kind of fills everything up. And then you kind of get in a little bit of a pattern. And just start moving it across. Okay, so this filler has set up and now I'm gonna sand it off. I got 150 on the uh, six inch Makita sander. And I'm going to go along and reveal all the character, take off the black stuff, and hopefully it's all nice and smooth. We'll see if any of the deeper cracks need any more fill, and if not, then we'll move on to some stain and finish. All right, we're moving right along. I ended up having to refill some of the deeper cracks. I put some more filler in, sanded them off, um, and now it's time to put some finish on. I'm going to use the Osmo 3166 stain. Um, it's a Karate Kid proposition, wax on, wax off. We'll rub through the entire thing and then we'll basically come on and wipe off the excess. Goes on nice. And then we can put some top coats on and then the top of this is finished. Okay, moving along. I've already put this black uh, walnut Danish oil on the base. Now it's time for some paint. We're just gonna brush it on and leave it, let it dry, and then we can sand it off and make it look a little bit distressed. Okay, now I've rubbed two more layers of Osmo matte top finish on this table. And it is done and ready to go.